Can you cancel Dave Portnoy? What is up everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tin Invest. If you follow Penn International or Barstool Sports Stock, then I'm sure you're wondering why in the heck did it just fall over 20%? And well, if you've never heard of Penn or Barstool or know where the potential lies in this company, then be sure to check out my video on the top five sports betting stocks at the moment. I go through and give a basic explanation of what Penn does and why they can see some growth in the future. But rather than breaking down the company like I normally do, in this video, we're going to discuss the quarter three earnings report and more specifically, why in the heck Penn fell so much today. I'll also be talking about the hit piece that was posted on Dave Portnoy, and I'll wrap it up by giving my final thoughts based on some of Mitch's magical TA. Now, for those of you who don't know Mitch's magic, um, Mitch is one of my buddies that is really, really into technical analysis, and he's really all about TA, and he's actually the one that put Redwire stock on my radar last week before it took off. But before I dive any deeper, it needs to be as clear as possible that I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Mitch is not a financial advisor. Nothing in this video is advice or anything. This is strictly my opinion based on my own research. Okay, so what's new with Penn? What's new with Barstool? What are they doing? What are, how are they trying to grow? What, what's their game plan? Well, for starters, Barstool has begun diversifying beyond just gambling. They have taken Dave Portnoy's pizza review obsession one step further by releasing one bite frozen pizzas at Walmart stores across the country. And well, let me tell you, the initial sales exceeded expectations. Apart from pizza, Barstool didn't wait a single second to get involved in sponsoring college athletes once the NCAA lifted the restrictions. According to the quarter three earnings, over 135 thousand collegiate athletes have signed with Barstool's platform pursuing name, image, and likeness deals. Now the next big move made by the company, and this one being the biggest of them all, is their acquisition of the score. In the call, it was mentioned that this acquisition diluted their shares by about 13 million. Here, take a listen. Maybe you hear it differently. Yeah, I know we, we issued 13 million shares associated with the score, so just add 13 to whatever your last number was, Joe. But I mean, Penn expects this deal to bring on much more value than that. But how? Well, the score provides them with technology, audience reach, and additional resources to accelerate their media and sports betting strategy. The score is also the number one sports media brand in Canada, which will then allow Penn to market their sports book in Canada by using the score's name. Pretty much the exact same way you saw them use the Barstool name in the USA, they'll be doing that in Canada with the score. This gives Penn a unique advantage in the Ontario and really the entire Canadian market. Now, I'm not from Canada, but essentially the way it sounds is the score is the ESPN of Canada. Now, if any of you from Canada are listening, please let me know in the comments below if that's true or not. Okay, so how about like the current sports betting side of things? How's that going for the company? Well, Barstool is constantly adding different features to their platform. For instance, the Parlay Plus, which allows bettors to make same game parlays. They also recently added a feature called shareable bet slips. This acts as essentially free marketing because people are just sharing their bet slips with one another. And I mean, last week alone, over 140,000 bet slips were shared. But okay, you're adding new features. Does this result in people gambling more? Well, actually, yes. From week one to week eight of the NFL season, Penn has seen the average weekly growth handle increase 9.2%, which honestly is kind of a really cool stat. As the NFL season has progressed, more people are gambling with more money. Penn has also seen their monthly active users grow 6x from last year, and they've been able to do so without putting forth much money for customer acquisitions. Overall, the blended customer acquisition costs were under $100 per user. To put in comparison, DraftKings was at almost $400 per user. But how? How in the world has Barstool been able to make such crazy savings? Well, 
I mean, to really, really understand what I'm talking about, you need to realize how strong the Barstool fan base, the Barstool following, the Barstool mob really is. And I mean, they're able to use this online presence to really bring people together and bring attraction to the Barstool sports books. For instance, the way I understood this is that in Illinois, you're required to make an account in person at a casino so you can online wager. So to incentivize the gamblers to come to the casino, Barstool held a block party during the Bears game, which attracted about 10,000 first time depositors within five days. Now, up until that point, they averaged just 25 to 30 new users per day. So yeah, it worked. And they did so without the need of major media costs and advertising costs. Okay, the next thing I wanted to talk about, and honestly, this really pissed me off because I'm a major pen bull, as you could see. I, like, I, I love the company, I believe in it, but this next stat that they gave just seemed kinda shady, so to say. So Penn made an effort to mention that they are tied for first among all mobile sports betting apps in the Apple App Store based on user ratings. And I mean, yeah, that's basically true, but the company failed to mention that they only have 14,000 reviews, while DraftKings has over 470,000 and FanDuel has over 88,000. So leaving that part out, I don't know, the whole entire thing just seemed kind of shady in my eyes. But just because they threw in that stat I didn't like doesn't mean that that's why the stock dropped. So the real question is, why in the heck did Penn drop over 20%, especially after everything I've talked about so far has seemed pretty positive? Well, yeah, there are some positives to take from today, but there were also some negatives. For instance, due to Hurricane Ida, the South region was affected significantly. And in addition to that, due to flare-ups of the COVID Delta variant, their property adjusted EBITDA was hit by an estimated $30 million. Penn International also mentions that they put forth about $7.5 million going live in other states, and they have put about $12.5 million for lobbying in California. I guess you know what they say, money talks. Okay, but what did the numbers tell us from this earnings report? Well, in regards to gaming, the company saw their revenues increase about 26%, and they even saw overall revenue reach $1.5 billion. And this was an increase of about 382 million when compared to 2020. But since we had COVID in that year, we can compare it to 2019. And I mean, Penn still managed to increase revenues by about $157 million when being compared to the 2019 numbers. But, and this is like a really big but. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Penn reported a net income of $86.1 million with a net income margin of about 5.7%. This is down almost 64% when being compared to the prior year's $141.2 million in net income. And that same year, they had about 12.5% in net income margin. So yeah, I mean, this led to Penn missing their earnings by 40%. So they missed like really big, but the earnings are not the only reason that Penn saw their share price fall over 20%. Today, major allegations against the face of Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy was released. And let me tell you, it shed some very bad light in Portnoy's direction. Now, I am not going to give my opinion on this situation, but what I will say is that if Dave Portnoy did break the law, then he should absolutely be punished. But like I said, I will not be giving my opinion. Instead, I'll explain what happened and give some snippets from Portnoy's 11 minute Twitter video where he tries to essentially tell his side of things. So according to Dave Portnoy, the Business Insider journalist, Julia Black, 
has been contacting pretty much every girl who has ever had a connection with him. Pretty much she was in search for a negative story. In Dave's eyes, she essentially knew what she wanted to write about and just needed the pieces to do so. And well, Julia Black found just that. Apparently, there was a girl who slid into Dave Portnoy's DMs and he replied and one thing leads to another. He flies her out to his home in Nantucket. They share a pizza dinner in true Dave Portnoy fashion. And well, after that, they have sex. But according to the girl, this was a traumatic experience. Apparently, Portnoy was aggressive and also filmed her without any permission. Now, at the end of the day, this seems to be turning out into just one giant he said, she said, and honestly, I don't think we'll ever find out the real truth. But one thing I do want to note is that Dave Portnoy's lawyers wanted him to stay quiet. They simply told him, let's just sweep this thing under the rug. It'll get forgotten after a certain amount of time. But that's not Dave Portnoy's style. Rather than stay quiet, he was upfront about knowing her. He was upfront about DMing her back. And he was also upfront about having her over and not getting along with one another. Now, if you care enough, then I would honestly recommend you reading the Business Insider piece and also listen to Dave Portnoy's response to the article. That way you can come up with your own opinion on the situation. Now, throwing on my tinfoil hat, Something that really kind of throws me off is the fact that why did this negative piece about Dave Portnoy, the barstool pen guy, have to get posted on the day of the Barstool Sports Pen International earnings report? I don't know. It's as if this move was intentional to get the response in the market that we saw. But again, that's just me with my tinfoil hat on. So take that with a grain of salt. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that's come to light today that I think would have contributed to the pen share price dropping over 20%. Now, the question is, what am I doing? Well, according to Mitch's magic in his TA, he thinks that we should hold off before buying any shares. He did tell me that there could be a buying zone right around here. Here, look, let me play some snippets. New 73 line, right? And you want to just keep bouncing and, and forming support there and hopefully just turn the ship around slowly but surely, right? Then when you get back above 73, then you can start targeting some shit, right? That's that's when you can start targeting 84 again and then 110 again. But until that happens, I mean, I guess you can accumulate some cheap shares at 52, but let's go through the scenario of 52 breaks, just like 73 broke. Well, then our next line comes down at $37. That's our last weekly pivot. And 37 bucks is rock bottom for me. If, if I saw 37 bucks on this stock, I would be like, oh, f that's a buy, right? I mean, that is a total buy. I guess I'll call 52, maybe a value buy down here, but I'd still be hesitant because because here's the point, man. My main takeaway I want you to take away from this is like opportunity cost is a huge thing when it comes to investing. So that's what Mitch thinks, but what do I think? Well, I mean, the name of this show is 10 Invest because the time is now, I am not the one to try to time the market. I've never been good at it. I'm not much of a lucky person, so to say. So when I see dips like this, it obviously makes me want to just dollar cost average, dollar cost average, and dollar cost average. But like Mitch talks about, the risk reward just might not be there. So if you're not nearly long-term bullish as I am, and you're not that much of a believer in Barstool, then maybe it's best that you hold off for a better buying opportunity. I personally am just very long-term bullish and I believe in the sports betting sector. And more importantly, I believe in the strength in the Barstool name. Now, until fundamentals change or if anything crazy or drastic happens, like Dave Portnoy going to prison, I don't know, we never know what could happen. Then maybe, obviously, my opinion can change. But as of now, am I holding 100%? Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. I really, really hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the pen dip. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments below. And be sure to check out some of the other videos I posted. Anyways, that's all I got for you today. Always remember, the time is